This is Kwame Nahoy giving us the history of the 1992 Constitution. Okay. Uh, he said that, that uh, he's talking about a committee. This had been tagged to, uh, onto a UNDP sponsored project, decentralization planning, being executed by the Ministry of Local Government. Okay, so I have to run through quickly. Kwame Nahoy is saying here in this slide that I'll push away that uh, the money for the committee to look at the constitution was coming from a, a decentralization process around PAMSCAD. I need to move on. Okay, so here are the committee members. Now we can take it step by step. The committee members, the members of the committee that constituted to put the constitution together. Dr. SKB Asante was chairman. Osaje for Osadia, your Dr. Jaman Bedu, Domahini was a member. Mr. Justice, Mrs. Justice Anija Gay, may she rest in peace, very distinguished judge, was a member. Mr. L. Uh, J. Chinri Hesse was a member. Mr. Ebo Bentienchel was a member. Mr. Kweju Afarijan was a member. He later to become electoral commissioner. Dr. Charles Jibuni was a member. Do, uh, Dr. Professor Evio Dankwa, my former lecturer, was a member. And uh, Mrs. Sabaino Ofori Boatin was also a member. It goes on. Justice Anan and the NCD suggested most of the members of the committee. Justice Anan was the liaison between the PNDC and the committee during his work and held a series of meetings with the chairman of the committee and at times with the committee in relation to his work. He was conversant with the essential arguments that had been advanced for the various systems of government, such as the executive presidency of the USA type. Now, these are the systems of government that Kwame Nahoy says were considered. Executive presidency of the USA type, a presidency with a prime minister of the French type that's a split executive, and the possibility of a constitutional court outside the mainstream judicial, uh, judiciary to deal with constitutional disputes. He shared his views and experience with the committee, some of which must have reflected in the options defined by the committee for a final decision. That is very interesting. It's getting interesting. Let's look at it. According to the chairman of the committee, Nana Dr. SKB Asante, Justice Anand and Captain Chikata had most now, knows that, I always said that the Constitution was created for a military janta, Flight Lieutenant Rawlings and Captain Koju Chikata. It is for them that the 1992 Constitution was created. You will see it here. Let's move on. According to the chairman of the committee, Nana Dr. SKB Asante, Justice Anand and Captain Chikata had been most instrumental in getting him to accept to work on the committee and to chair it. He had known Justice Anand from 1966 when the two of them were working at the Attorney General's Department at a time when Justice Anand was in charge of the Kumasi office. Their friendship grew when he returned from further studies abroad in 1969 and became a Solicitor General. But it was really cemented in 1975 when, as a judge, Justice Anand was appointed chairman of a committee of inquiry into the alleged fraudulent sale of some residual fuel and Justice Anand cleared him of all the allegations of complicity in the crime. Hey, this is interesting. Residual fuel, yeah, yeah, kind. It, it started long ago like that, 75. Can you imagine that? Yeah. It says, their friendship was cemented when Justice Anand, as a chairman of a committee of inquiry, into the alleged fraudulent sale of some residual fuel, and Justice Anand cleared him of the allegations of complicity in the crime. That was when he really came to appreciate Justice Anand's integrity. So when the latter approached him in 1992 with the PNDC's offer of the position of chairman of the Committee of Experts Constitution, he had no hesitation in accepting it. In any case, he had been discussing the process for a return to constitutional rule for quite some time with both Justice Anand and Captain Chikata during his frequent visits to Ghana from his United Nations New York base at the time. Nana Dr. Asante also confirmed that he discussed with Justice Anand the directive from the PNDC for the committee to consider a proposed executive structure of a president and a prime minister, a proposal that was eventually rejected. So from the PNDC angle, they were looking for a constitutional executive that has an executive and a prime minister. And I'll tell you the story behind that. The story behind that was that Flight Lieutenant Rawlings was to be retained as the executive and PV or B was to be the prime minister. This was the packaging from the PNDC angle. Let's see how it got toppled. Okay. The two also discussed the real likelihood of weak parliamentary oversight of the executive in the light of what eventually became Article 108 of the Constitution under which members of parliament cannot initiate bills with financial implications. I think that has been corrected now. No, it hasn't been corrected. We just have added private members' bill, but it still cannot have financial implications. Okay. The terms of reference of the Committee of Experts, originally drafted by Kwame Nahoy himself, and approved with amendment by Justice D.F. Anand and Captain Chikata. You see how Captain Chikata as a security couple was principally interested in participating in constitutional arrangement. Captain Chikata as a security couple 
But he was deployed there by Fly Lieutenant Rawlings to look after his interests because they wanted a certain kind of constitution. That is why this constitution is an amendment. It was done for the military junta of J.J. Rawlings and Kojo Chikata. Okay, so it goes on. Uh, Captain Chikata and incorporated into the committee's experts by the PNDC were to draw up a draft constitution for Ghana, uh, taking into account the following. One, the report of the NCD of 25th March 1991 on evolving through democracy, the abrogated constitutions of Ghana 1957, 60, 69, 79, etc. Such other matters relating to the proposals for a draft constitution as a PNDC may refer, and any other matter which in the opinion of the committee is reasonably reflected in the foregoing. In imperative terms, the PNDC directed under Section 42 that the proposals of the committee shall e. provide for an executive presidency to be elected on the universal adult suffrage, provided for a prime minister who must command a majority in the National Assembly, provide for a, uh, provide for a National Assembly to be elected on the basis of universal adult suffrage. So this is the PNDC's proposal. The PNDC proposed for an executive president to be elected, J.J. Rawlings, a prime minister who must command majority in parliament, PV or being MP for Akokre, that's how it was going to be, provide for a national assembly that was also elected. This is the PNDC's proposal. Let's see how it was shut down. Okay. And then guarantee, protect, and secure the enforcement and enjoyment of every person in Ghana of the fundamental human rights and freedoms, including the freedom of speech, freedom of arbitrary arrest, blah, 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 etc. Uh, provide for a free and independent judiciary, guarantee the freedom and independence of the media. Provide for directive principles of state policy that shall ensure participatory democracy and sound management of the national economy. Provide for a decentralized system of national administration based on a nonpartisan district assembly with development as its objective and including revenue sharing clauses. Okay. Reflect a commitment to equal and balanced development of all parts of Ghana, particularly in the allocation of national resources. Okay, let's move on. The Committee of Experts did not accept some of the directives of the PNDC. Uh, on, and for the constitution, they rejected the proposal for a francophone style split executive between executive president and the prime minister. Let's move on. The committee also rejected the proposal for a proportional representation in favor of major, ma majoritarian system. I don't like that. They should have taken proportional representation. Let's move on. The committee instead opted for an executive presidency with a prime minister who will be the head of government government administration, and the leader of government business in parliament, as well as the first past the post system of elections. So after, even though the committee rejected the PNDC's original proposal, this is what they came with. They opted for an executive presidency, Rawlings, a prime minister, PV or B, who would be the head of government. Okay, so let's move on. It also proposed the appointment of ministers from both inside and outside parliament, with the majority coming from inside parliament. A council of state with a judicial committee and defined functions and powers. The Council of State doesn't have the Judicial Committee that they wanted, but they proposed it. A parliament from which the members of the public service, such as the police service, the civil service, and the armed forces will not be qualified. A judiciary with the power of judicial review of executive and legislative action and a partisan central, a, a partisan central government superimposed on a non-partisan decentralized system of local government. That's very controversial, but that's what we have. The report of the Committee of Experts was put directly before a consultative assembly which had been constituted by the PNDC as the main reference document for the preparation of the constitution. So this is where the changes begin. This is interesting now. The establishment of the consultative assembly was not without problems. The initial problem arose with the association of recognized professional bodies led by the Ghana Bar Association, which demanded the establishment of a directly elected constituent assembly to prepare the constitution as had been the case in the past. Now, let me explain this. The Ghana Bar Association were saying that now you have the constitution, the draft constitution. You want an assembly to look at it. Let's elect the members of the assembly from around the country. Let's not have government appointing people because they didn't trust the PNDC government. They suspected the PNDC government was going to pack the house with its people and they were going to railroad the PNDC's agenda of what a constitution should be. And that's exactly what happened. The fears of the Ghana Bar Association uh, came to pass. Let's move on. Mr. Justice Hayford Benjamin's appointment as deputy speaker of the consultative assembly was particularly intriguing. An avowed critic of the PNDC, he was a chairman of the Ghana Democratic Movement, a UK-based anti-PNDC opposition group. That Justice Annan, Captain Chikata, and the PNDC were able to convince him and to cede this critical position to him was a credit to the PNDC's appreciation of political realism, focus, and commitment in an increasingly hostile international environment. 
The PNDC ultimately succeeded in steering its own political future and that of Ghana from the path of political confusion and chaos, as Kwame Nahoy writes. More to come. In spite of justice from Benjamin's position and the role in the Consultative Assembly, the professional bodies thought that the PNDC had cleverly packed the Assembly with elements and organizations biased in its favor and consequently opted not to participate in the deliberation. I think that this was a wrong decision of the Ghana Bar. So I'm sure with the benefit of hindsight, we know that. And, I, and I, when I go to the next slide, you see how wrong it was. The professionals didn't come. Ghana Bar Association, Ghana Medical Association, Institution of Engineers, they decided to boycott the, the processes to give us a new constitution. They boycotted it. So when they boycotted it, who did it? Have a look. Okay. The Consultative Assembly membership included, now listen carefully, viewers. It's included, these are the people who put the constitution together for us. When the proposals went from the experts, these are the people who put it together for us. No disrespect intended. I'm just showing you the history of our constitution. The consultative assembly membership included representative from the committee for the committee for the defense of the revolution, one. Butchers Association, two. Kenum Fishermen Association, three. Cooperative Distillers Association, four. Gold and Silver Smith Association, five. Tailors and Dressmakers Association, six. Ghana Traditional Caterers Association, formerly known as Chop Bar Keepers Association, seven. Hairdressers Association, Inland Canoe Fishermen Association, Inshore Boat, Boat Owners Association, Drinking Bar Operators Association, Bakers Association, a Traditional Medical Healers Association. In the end, the Ghana Bar Association and the National Union of Ghana Students boycotted proceedings of the Assembly, which sat for six solid months. For six months, this group of people were reviewing the documents prepared by uh, 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 Professor Ani, the Justice Ani Jage. They were reviewing the documents prepared by SKB Asante. They, for six months, this association were reviewing the documents to propose a new constitution for Ghana. That's what happened. That may be the reason why we need to amend the constitution after 30 years. This is the process of the constitution we have now. And so now you understand what I've been saying every day. It would appear that initially, Justice Anna supported the idea of a constituent assembly, but he would. Justice Anna will support the idea of a constituent assembly that's elected so that the government doesn't control it. You know, uh, as the norm in the constitution making in Ghana, he was anxious to ensure that the delicate work of the consultative assembly was not upset by strident objection from a minority comprising a vocal legal fraternity and the intellectual leaders of the youth. Justice Anna was a great man. He was concerned about this. That why? Okay, let's do the constituent assembly thing. Let's just have people elected. And then they should come. So if you are Sami Okujeto, you go to North Town, get elected and come. And Anan was thinking about that. And that's what they should have done. Because Anan was concerned that you don't want this thing to be criticized and it doesn't look like it's a national thing. And that Kwame Naho is the one writing this with Nana Atudazi, I have to say. However, he says, just Anan became assured that ultimately a referendum of the people as a whole to approve the work of the Constitutive Assembly was a better option. This was not difficult for him because his work at the NDC, NCD had brought him to appreciate that true democracy was not merely a conclave of the learned few or those who considered themselves as political elites. I agree with that. True democracy is not, is not a conclave of learned few. But in building the laws that will govern a country, Plato said something, that the salvation of the state lay in removing government from untutored hands so that the, the society will be governed according to the findings of philosophy. It's in page 25 of Plato's Laws. Check it. It's in the Political Science Library. Go and read it. Page 25 of Plato's Laws. Plato defines it. He says, the salvation of the state, how the state will be saved, the salvation of the state lay in removing government from untutored hands so that the society will be governed according to the findings of philosophy. So, in, in putting our constitution together, we really needed a certain group of people to do it. But yes, democracy is not a conclave of some elite people. Democracy is for everyone. I agree with that. And I think I agree with Kwame Nahoy here as well. In his numerous consultations with a cross-section of Ghanaian community, including chiefs, businessmen, etc. Okay, let me move on. Ejazanan ensured that the consultative process was open to the various stratas, strata of society and different social and economic interests were involved in the process. Okay, great. The PNDC's preference for a consultative assembly as against a constituent assembly was itself tied to its original objective of establishing a true democracy 
uh, for Ghana as reflected in PNDC Law 42, blah, blah, blah. Okay. From the perspective of Justice Anand, the only persons who could ever be excluded will be those who opted not to be part of the process. Okay. Let's move on. It says, consistent with this objective, the PNDC opted to show openness and sincerity to the various strata of society, the different social and economic interests from grassroots upwards, etc., etc. Okay. In a statement, the PNDC said it regarded the document. Okay, this is when the document was ready. So, I'm done. This is the history. So, you see, what, so what happened to executive president, prime minister? Everything changed into one president who has all the executive powers provided Article 58. It was a constitution created for military junta. Let's end it. Okay. <laughs>